So welcome back to the shop, friends. Wow, what a blessing it is to be able to come in and work in the shop on a day like we've been having today. We've had a freezing rain, um, an ice storm that's come through where it's just, it's, it's not even hardly safe to go anywhere. So we're just kind of hunkered down with the wood stove going and, and I, I, I just feel very blessed to be able to not to have to work out in that environment like I, I used to for so many years. So this is part two of our project and many of you have probably already guessed what we're doing here. And uh, we're making a, um, a sturdy child sled or a sleigh um, that uh, is gonna have a little twist on the end that you, you may not be expecting. Uh, so um, at, in the first video, we did the, the runners. Uh, and if you're just joining us here, these are the runners uh, that, uh, that I made with the, uh, the fir tree, kind of a decoration in there. Um, ah, you know, it's, it takes a little bit of extra time and effort to do something like that, but I, I think it's so worth it when, when you look at it, and it just, to me, it just gives you a little bit of pleasure, a little, just, just, uh, it, it's, lightens it up a little bit and just gives it, I, I think it just gives it a, a really nice touch. Um, so I used a red oak for this. Um, some folks ask why I didn't use fur for this project, and uh, it's got to be really durable. It's going to be, uh, if I use oak, it'll probably be tough enough where uh, we might be able to use it without runners. If not, we can put some steel runners, maybe copper on there um, uh, if, if that's necessary. But there'll be a lot of lateral torsion on it. And when you have kids on it, you, you don't want it to break and to fail. So uh, that's, why, um, that's why I decided to go with the uh, with the red oak. So uh, we're gonna be doing the cross members today. I've already got actually one of them done, and so we'll do the other one together here. And those, those are right there. That's the shape that I came up with, just kind of a, a nice uh, arch uh, that goes in there. Is that what we call what, a, ste a step dado? Or I don't remember all the, all the nomenclature. So let's, uh, let's go to work on this. We'll get it fitted and uh, chop, chop that in and, uh, and kind of see, start to see, see it take shape. So this is the piece that we're going to be making together. As I said, I got the first one done right there. And indeed, that is going to go into a stopped dado. I believe that's what they call that, going off of memory right here. So one thing that in all, uh, in, to be completely transparent, I, I made a terrible blunder while I was building this in that when I was chiseling this dado out, I broke off the corner. <laughs> right? The nice thing about wood is it is so forgiving that usually uh, you can uh, find something out. And it actually turned out to be a blessing because it gave a, a, a design element to, to it that uh, actually looks better than had it, had it been square. So all that I did where, where that broke off there is I just took a, a hand plane and I planed it down and then just sanded it lightly. And I did the same thing on both sides. I have a little bit more sanding to do on this side right here. You can see there's a still a little bit of groove. Actually, they both, they both broke out. See, I learned my lesson slow and I wasn't careful after the second one either. So, but it all turned out. So we'll we'll clean that up there. But that's uh, that's no problem. So here's the here's the piece we're gonna do, and I'll show you how I got this radius. It may not be the best way. It's just uh, uh, it's a handy little trick that I use in the shop all the time. A radius that seems to work for so many things that I've used on countless things is my uh, my bar stool. My little just an inexpensive tool I use in here. I've used five gallon paint buckets. You can use the bottom of a garbage can or a lid uh, to get those long radiuses like that. Or of course you have a compass. I don't, I don't have all that stuff. So this seems to be work pretty good. So what I do just to get it pretty even is I will just come in here a little bit and just kind of eyeball it and then take my pencil and just trace it around like that. And it gives you a, a nice clean radius, which just happened to work again as it, this chair works for so many things. Uh, to get that. So let's cut it out real quick. So to cut this radius out, I'm just going to use a jigsaw. I, I, I've got a bandsaw. Bandsaw works really good for this as well. I try not to use tools that most people don't have, as a lot of the guys don't have bandsaws, but this is something that, that, that you, is pretty common and, and easy to acquire. When you're doing these radiuses, whether it be a bandsaw or a, or a uh, jigsaw like this, you can see I overheated that blade right there, uh, is uh, to use a really, a wood, a nice wood blade with a lot of teeth in it so you don't get a, a, a ragged edge on one side. And then the narrower your blade, the easier it's going to be to turn in a tight radius. This is, I wouldn't consider it to be a tight radius, but it's getting a little bit tight for a wide blade like this. So this is a, a really skinny, uh, thin blade uh, that turns a lot, a lot better. Boy, I'll tell you what, if you don't have a, a vise, uh, if you haven't built a bench yet, 
I got a cut into my bench there. Just grazed, just grazed the, uh, I put beeswax on the end of this when I built this bench years ago because the, the wood wasn't really dry to slow down the, the drying of it so it wouldn't crack and check so bad. It really did work good, but I, I never took it off. I just didn't see any reason to. Uh, but if you don't have a, 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 a proper woodworking vise, I found that this clamp right here, just this one clamp, uh, will do just about everything. I actually use this clamp more than I use my, my vise for. What's nice about this is it's got the big flat jaws. It's uh, really strong and it's covered in plastic. So if you're working with your chisels and stuff and you accidentally slip, work, you know, working around a clamp like this, one slip and you can take hours of work to fix your chisel. Uh, it's, it's protected. So I, I, I just, I only have one of them and I, I use it all the time. So just get your clamp there and you can cut a little past halfway, then flip it around there, and then we'll cut this, uh, cut this other half. See, that's the problem with, a, with, a, uh, with that type of a saw, especially one that's not real, uh, real high end, is that it, uh, and that some of that's, some of that's user error right there, is that when you go in and if, you, if you're not paying attention like I didn't do right there, the blade, will, you get some deflection. The blade will actually kind of cuts at an angle, and th those did not come together at all. So uh, that's okay. We'll just, I'll just clean that up there. We'll clean that up there with the chisel, um, make it match. But that's not a problem. It's just, uh, yeah, that's kind of what you run into when you don't use them properly. So here's where that jigsaw blade didn't come together. I'm just going to use a spoke shave, and just a couple. Couple strokes that fixes that, and we can clean that up with a little bit of sandpaper. Now, if you have a plane, you're going to want to use it. This is my well, this is my favorite one, the number four Stanley. This is a new reproduction of the of the number fours. Boy, the number four is the go-to. It just is just the perfect size for just about everything. I rarely use any of the other ones. Just uh, because it's just so versatile in so many ways. I uh, lubricate the bottom of my um, plane with uh, ballastol. I love the smell of ballastol. And I just have this, uh, uh, it's like an old gunsmithing rag that I uh, saturate it with and I keep it in this delightful tin can that I got from my granddad. Made in Holland. I wonder if, but they don't make cans like that in Holland anymore. But I like the tradition. I keep that handy right here. And it's incredible the difference uh, that, that you, the, how much better the plane works when you lubricate the bottom of it like that. It's, I mean, it's just miraculous. So I've got this at really shallow. All I want to do is just, I want to take off the, the pencil marks. Look at that. It just feels so, so good. Take the pencil marks off as well as um, give it that nice hand plane look. I spent a lot of time getting the blade, the iron really really sharp on this one. Look at the shavings come off. It's just delightful. But I don't want to, I don't want to take, make that any thinner because it's, it's, it's got to stay three quarter because that's the, that's the width of it, my chisel. So you don't want to, you want to be able to make one pass with your chisel and it'd be the same as your wood if you, if you can. It just makes it a little, a little easier. Look at those. This is hard oak. A lot of people hate on these, uh, new Stanley planes, and I don't know, I, I guess I don't know enough about planes to really know the difference. All I know is that, is that this has been wonderful, wonderful to use. I've really enjoyed it. But with that being said, I haven't, you know, I haven't had a, like a, uh, like a, a number four Stanley Bailey, a vintage one, you know, restored properly, you know, one of the high end ones. So, you know, I don't really know the difference. I don't, I don't, is there a lot of difference? I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I, you know, those planes are hard to come by because they're so popular and they're kind of expensive and then most of them need restoring and some of them are beyond restoring. So for a lot of guys, being able to buy one of these reproductions from, from Stanley, um, I mean, I, I've really enjoyed it. So just a little bit there. Um, well, here's another thing. It always comes up. I don't know if I've addressed this or not. Every time uh, I use a plane and I set it down like this, 
someone always says, oh, you know, you shouldn't do that. You're going to ruin the iron. Well, the reason why you were taught in school not to set a plane down like this by your, your shop teacher was because he had to maintain probably 20, 30 of these things, and he had kids sitting them down on table saws and metal surfaces, they're, you know, ruining the iron. But to sit it down on a wooden bench is not going to, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, I'm sitting, I'm using it here, right? On hard oak, if I sit it down there, it's not going to hurt anything. So that's the, that's the reason why you were told that uh, in school. It was just a, uh, it just made it easier. Ah, oh, it's just delightful. Just made it easier for the shop teacher. All right, that looks great. So here's a trick to save you a lot of pain. <laughs> the sharpest tool I own is my layout knife with the point on it. And I was, so I, was, well, I was gonna show, I'll show you now. So what I, when I drew, drew out the dado here to, to chisel this out, uh, what I do is I um, use this, you know, I'll, I'll put the lines on there with a pencil, then I'll put the knife right on the line, and then I'll slide the combination square to it, right? That way it's absolutely perfect. Well, one thing you, what you do is you press really hard with this as you're scoring, especially on the, cutting the fibers of the wood with this oak. I had my thumb sticking over this, supporting the back of the ruler, and I came through here pressing as hard as I can, and it slipped off and cut my thumb down to the bone, so I super glued it there and put some tape on it. But uh, All right, so that's that. Uh, <laughs> Keep your thumb out of the way. I'll, I bet I won't do that again. Let's uh, chisel this out. Three eighths deep is how we're gonna, how deep we're gonna go here for the dado. So when you're cutting out a dado or a mortise like this, and you you've severed those fibers, you cut them as deep as you can. You it's really important this little bit because you want this edge to be clean because it's gonna show. You want it to be nice and tight. Once you get that little that first little bit knocked off there, it's um. You can be more aggressive with it underneath. And you can see there now that we've got that fiber cut. This is a, this is, I learned this from uh, Paul Sellers. He's probably the best traditional woodworker channel on YouTube. Um, and it just works so, so good. It's nice, it's nice to work with oak. You know, I've always, always worked with kind of the wood that we have around here, which is fir and it's really, really uh, soft compared to oak. So this is certainly more forgiving. Now, you gotta be careful. One thing that's it's really temp tempting is when you get that first little bit uh, off there is to start, is to put your chisel in here and cut this way with a flat part to the back. That's the, that's the worst thing you can do because what it does is as you drive it down, it pushes it into the wall and it um, mashes out the wood and ruins everything. So you want to actually, it's kind of counterintuitive, but you run your chisel the other way, like this here. So you go right up to that, right up to that knife wall, and you, you, the angle is determined by the bevel on the chisel. You want it to go straight up and down. And just give it a little tap. And that way, it's much less likely to deform and mash your wood out. And you gotta be kind of careful with the first few. You really, really, really delicate and light strokes. And then once, uh, once you get down in there a little bit and the edge is protected, then you can, you can really get after it. So here's the completed stopped dado right there. So to do that, you know, I just kept working with the chisel. I usually, pretty much everything that you, that you need uh, to do this type of woodworking as far as chisels, I only really use two. There's a three quarter and a half inch. Those would be the first two that I'd get. Um, and I have, this is the new Stanley 750s, the reproductions. I have these and I've been over the years collecting the original ones here, the seven, these, this is an original 750. So you can see that some of the similarities, uh, but they're not the same. They're, they're, they're much, the old ones are much thicker. Uh, they hold a better edge. These new ones have a tendency to, to chip I've even noticed on using on some hardwoods, the old ones are just far superior. Just the, the it's just the little things. Um, not that these are bad. I, I could get by with these, but I, given a choice, I'd probably restore an old one. And then to to get that depth, you know, that we wanted that to be three eighths. So it's really hard to eyeball that, when, or it is for me when I'm 
working in here and I'm, and I'm cleaning all this out, I have a tendency to get deeper on this end and on this end and I don't make contact and it's going to be a weaker joint. So one thing that's um, the Stanley number 71, the hand plane here is perfect for this because then you can set the depth. It's got a cutting edge on it. You can set the depth when you, and when you get close, then you can use this. And then that, that just goes along there and you go back and forth that hand router and shaves it to the exact depth. This is what we have right there. I'm assuming. So let's see how our cross member fits here. Okay, so that's a little bit different thickness. Oh, I, I got the wrong edge. Okay, yeah, that's right. Okay, so that's why, you know, all of this stuff being hand planed uh, is, it's got some different, it's obviously thicker on this end than this end, which is just fine. We'll just have to remember when I laid this out, I used this, this skinner, skinnier end right there. So when I get situations like that, I'll just very lightly put a pencil mark. I'll just say that's a, that's a right there. I have a pencil that's going to work. There we go. I'll put an A right here and an A there. And that way they'll go back together properly. All four dados are done here. So let's uh, put it together and we'll see how it looks. Oh, if it's nice, this oak will be nice and be nice and, and tough. So that one's a little loose. The glue will settle that all in though. Let's see. Okay, that looks great. So that looks pretty good. I, I like the dimensions of everything. That, uh, that arch having that, uh, well, what do you call that? That radius in there looks really, really nice. Gives it a little, gonna give it a little bit of clearance as well. And saves weight too. You know, we don't want it to be super heavy. You can get carried away with oak, oak, starts to stack up ounces turn into pounds pretty quick with it because it's so dense but uh, I might even might even skeletonize that front section let me show you what I'm talking about there so here it is from the front same those two crossbars are exactly the same there 12 inches across two and two, 12 inches by three quarter by two and an eighth is what the overall dimensions came to now as far as the skeletonizing uh, we could do that up front here and that would be right here it does you know to me the more i look at it it does look a little bit heavy in the front and the reason you know a portion part of the reason for the for the fir trees uh was uh, not only of course it's decoration but to 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 lose lose a little bit of weight out of it um, take away some of the mass but uh what if we did something like this if we maybe cut almost like a like a, a triangle if it went um you know something like this and then back or maybe follow follow the contour follow follow this radius here what do you think about that you think we should do that or you think we should just leave that can you picture it maybe maybe uh here up and down i don't know i think almost think that that looks a little bit too too heavy right there, but maybe not. Tell me what you think in the comments. You think we should skeletonize it? Should we? Here's the two options. Should we uh, just like come down an inch and just follow fo follow this this shape and hollow that out so it mimics that, or should we do something a little bit more of a here here and come to that point right there? Kind of see see what I'm saying? Kind of a triangle. That's option number two. Number one would be to follow the contour exactly. So let me know in the comments what you think about that, which one would look best, and then um, we can kind of decide on that together. But uh, I think it turned out great. Looks really, really nice. Um, good size. Uh, still very lightweight. We, I th yeah, should, I think we should probably take that out of there. Uh, well, next time we'll do the slats. We'll do the slats and then kind of a clever, I have this clever mounting system. Um, that uh, I'll share with you too that I'm still kind of working out in my head but that's a uh, that's essentially it for today so thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next part
So good morning to everyone and a happy Sabbath to you people of faith. What a, uh, boy, the weather has turned foul out here on the homestead. It's so sad when we get these beautiful uh, blankets of snow uh, that we enjoy so much. Um, and then the freezing rain comes and then the rain comes and melts it all away. So it's uh, it's always a little bit sad, uh, but we're uh, we're okay today. We're, uh, we're going to stay in today and enjoy the wood stove. And, um, and, and Saturday for us uh, is, is a day uh, of family time. Uh, it's a day of rest where we don't do any work, um, and we just uh, look. We look forward to it so much. You know, it's uh, for people who uh, who are, are not um, people not of faith. You know, sometimes um, uh, you can look upon uh, religious traditions or, or teachings uh, with kind of uh, maybe a bit of a jaundiced eye. But uh, you know, sometimes um, the 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 traditions that uh, have been given us by our fathers and handed down by God are they they're a, a tremendous blessing and even if you don't uh, or not a person of faith uh, if you do gather your family together pick a day whatever day works for you guys um, and and say make a statement draw a line in the sand and say okay we're not going to do any work today today is our day of rest, re- recuperation, away from the internet, um, away from work, away from all of the things that really kind of stress us out in life. And we are going to have that to look forward to. And I promise you, uh, it'll become a great, great blessing for your family, uh, something that you'll look forward to and breaks up the week. And it just is, um, it's just necessary for, for recovery. There's so much, so much stress in life and so many things coming at us all the time. Uh, one thing that we do uh, in the evenings that uh, has been really, really fun that I'd recommend to you guys is uh, we'll play board games. Um, board games, some of the newer board games are are really uh, fun and and they've come a long ways from the old days of uh, Monopoly and Sorry and Risk and many of those games that we've grown up with. Uh, one that I would strongly recommend to you that is our personal favorite, we play it every week, um, is a game called Catan. I'll put a link in the um, subject heading uh, for an Amazon link to that. Uh, get that. If you have a family of three or more, it is uh, so fun. It, it's uh, There's a lot of action. Uh, there's a lot of strategy. Uh, it doesn't take the gameplay doesn't take very long. You can play, um, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. So it's a perfect after dinner game. Um, and we've even gotten our neighbors coming over uh, and playing it. Brian really likes it. He's really good at it. And, and um, him and Laura will come over and play it as well as Je- Jeff and Alicia. And uh, we really, really enjoy that. So um, that's it. All right. Well, the video's getting long here. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.